I'm Lori Underwood, and I'm going to be talking about um, Catholic social teaching. Um, Catholics love the number seven, and we love hierarchies. So we have seven hierarchical principles of social justice. One builds upon the other. Um, very Thomistic, which is because they come from St. Thomas. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, the, two, uh, the two cardinal figures in Catholic social teaching are Thomas Aquinas and um, uh, uh, Pope John Paul II. It was during his papacy that Catholic social justice really found a voice in, in the public forum. Um, so the first and the foundational principle of Catholic social teaching is respect for the human person. So that is really the foundational principle and everything else builds from there. Um, from respect for the human person, we get the promotion of the family. All Catholic social teaching teaches, teaches us that we should promote the family. Um, at least in one of the more controversial principles of Catholic social justice, which is the prohibition against um, birth control. And uh, I'm sure we'll have questions about that. It's one of the more problematic areas of Catholic social justice, which is um, um, in the areas of, of uh, reproductive choice. Um, but the promotion of the family goes beyond that. It has to do with the wider social network of making sure that there's a living wage because you can't have functioning families if those families don't have a living wage to be able to, to sustain family life. So it's far more complicated than that. Um, the promotion of the family leads to the next stage, which is the protection of property rights, um, which is an aspect of, of Catholic social thought. Um, uh, they, families can't function if they don't have the material means to sustain their own lives. Uh, but there's a caution that comes with that, which is that um, the right to private property cannot go so far that property becomes an idol. The right to property, pr private property brings with it um, the responsibility to promote the common good. So um, there's always balance. This is very, a very Thomistic idea that when you have a right to something, you also have a responsibility to not abuse that right. Um, so the right to private property leads to the next stage, which is working for the common good. Um, and Pope John Paul defines the common good as the sum total of social conditions, which allow people, either as groups or individuals, to reach their fulfillment more fully and easily. Um, it brings us together in community, not simply as isolated individuals, um, but as a whole family of, of a society to spread the good. Um, even though it's a common good, it's not the highest good, of course. He always cautions us to know that the highest good comes only through God. Um, this leads to probably the most controversial um, tenet of Catholic social thought because the common good cannot be provided by community alone. It also has to be sustained by the government. And the next stage of Catholic social thought is the principle of subsidiarity, which says that the government is not there just to provide security. The government has a positive role to play. The government must secure the common good. Um, it is the task of the state to provide for the defense and preservation of common goods for all individuals within that society and to safeguard those goods that cannot be safeguarded by market forces. So according to Catholic social thought, um, the government is morally required to provide a safety net, um, which leads to the next stage, which is the respect for work and the worker. Um, uh, workers are not to be treated as mere drones, uh, as merely means for production, capital for the owners. They must be accorded the opportunity to uh, have free association and they have a natural right to form unions and secure collectively just opposite, um, um, compensation, according to the Catholic Church. So that's one of our more controversial stances, that uh, there's a natural right to, to form union, unions and secure just compensation. Um, and then uh, that leads us to the final stage, which is um, all Catholics of good conscience are supposed to <coughs> pursue peace and care for the poor. Pursuing peace means caring for our environment, um, taking means to secure that there are no um, social conditions that will bring with it causes to come to war. So this is the, the most complicated stage because it's the highest level and because there are so many subtleties that lead to war. Um, one of the ways you'll see this expressed is that um, um, uh, so long as there's hunger, there will be no peace. This is one of the ways that, that, that this idea is expressed. 
um, you can't have, have peace so long as there's injustice anywhere. Um, uh, so it's a very comprehensive idea at this top stage that you have to correct the underlying causes of poverty and corruption if you want to have a peaceful world. Um, it's not just the absence of conflict, it's a tranquility of order that all Catholic individuals of good conscience are supposed to seek not only in their societies but as missionary work in societies all over the world to bring the world to a stage of peace that that is our duty to seek, and it has environmental components in terms of, of um, stewardship of the land. And so um, that is, that is uh, Catholic social justice. Of course, the, the big figures in it are Pope John Paul II, um, uh, uh, I'm completely blank, Mother Teresa. Mm -hmm. um, uh, where we do really well is uh, um, promoting peace, caring for the poor. Um, we have a, a terrible record in terms of uh, um, uh, sexual orientation and uh, promoting women's rights. Uh, and I'm sure we'll get questions on, on those when you have an opportunity to ask them. 